Hey everyone, my name is Matt Walter and I'm a product manager on Google Analytics. And today I'm going to talk to you about the audience builder in Google Analytics 4. This video is part of a larger training series where product managers share step-by-step -step instructions on different features within Google Analytics 4. Now let's go ahead and jump into the agenda. First, I'm going to give an introduction to what audiences are. Then I'll be covering some key features of the audience builder in GA4. Next, we'll talk about audiences and how they can be exported out of Google Analytics. And then lastly, I'll give a product demo of how to use audiences in GA4. So first, what are audiences and what are some common use cases for audiences? Audiences in GA4 properties let you segment your users in the ways that are important to your business. You can segment by dimensions, metrics, and events to include practically any subset of your users. As analytics gets new data about users, their audience memberships are reevaluated to ensure that they still meet the audience criteria. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the use cases in the audience builder. There are many ways that you can use audiences. First, you can use audiences for reporting purposes in analytics. You could use audiences as a dimension and add that to a report and filter by that. Next, you can trigger events when users match the definition of an audience and become members. You can then use those triggered events for bidding, for example, in Google Ads. And lastly, you can use audiences within Firebase. One example would be in cloud messaging or in the remote config product. Now let's talk more about what the audience builder is and how you can use it. There are three options for defining and creating audiences in GA4. You can use a template, you can use a suggested audience, or you can create a new audience from scratch. Let's start by talking about how to use a template. Audience templates are partially configured audiences that already identify a set of dimensions or metrics that you might care about. For example, the demographics template includes the age, gender, language, interest, and location dimensions that you can use to define a particular audience in which you're interested. Next, you can use a suggested audience. Analytics provides a number of fully configured audiences that you can use out of the box as is or modify if necessary. For example, the recently active users audience is defined as to include users when the user engagement event is present. You can use the audience as is, or you can add conditions or sequences or change the membership duration as necessary if you'd like. We also have verticalized suggested audiences. For example, for e-commerce, you can use a cart abandoners audience or a checkout starters audience, and these are tailored to your specific vertical that you care about. And the last option is to create a brand new audience from scratch. Now let's talk through some of the fundamentals of the audience builder when you're creating an audience from scratch. First, you're gonna to want to use inclusion and exclusion clauses to build your audience. For example, if I want to know who made purchases and include users who made purchases in my audience, I could use the purchase event in an include clause, as you see in the picture here. When using an exclusion clause, one thing to note is you can choose between temporary and permanent conditions. Select temporarily exclude users when to exclude users from the audience during periods when they meet the condition. And conversely, select permanently exclude users when to exclude users from the audience if they've ever met the condition. Next, you can choose the scope of when the conditions in an audience must be met. You can choose from the options of across all sessions in a single session or in a single event. You can also set the membership duration in your audience. Membership duration allows you to specify the number of days that users remain in the audience. Each time a user engages in behavior that meets the criteria for being included in the audience, that user's membership duration is reset to the full value of this option. The max membership duration you can set is 540 days or 18 months from the time the user is added to the audience last. Another feature you can use in the audience builder is sequences. Sequences allow you to create audiences based on users who have completed a series of conditions. The condition can occur at the user level, the session level, or the event level. For an e-commerce use case, you could define your first step as a user who has used a coupon and looked at a specific product. And then maybe in a second step after that, you could focus on users who have made a purchase. For the gaming use case, for the first step, you might want to look at users who have achieved a certain level, such as Wizard, and maybe have also defeated a character such as the Dragon. 
And then subsequently for the second step, you might want to look at users who have made a purchase, uh, such as a power-up. And the, the value of that purchase needs to be greater than $5. Next, as you define your audience, the summary card updates with the number of users who have met your criteria during the last 30 days, so you have an idea of potential audience size. When you create an audience, Analytics adds any users who have met the audience criteria during the last 30 days, assuming you have at least 30 days of data. Next, audience triggers let you trigger or create events when users match the definition of an audience and become members. You can analyze these events in your reports, and you can enable them as conversions as with any other events. You can create up to 20 audience trigger events per property. Here are some use cases for audience triggers. Maybe you want to trigger a conversion event when a user enters your loyal user's audience. That could be defined as, for example, users who booked a hotel three times in the last 90 days. Or maybe you want to trigger an event when users cross a threshold of lifetime value. Another example is you could harness the power of machine learning by using predicted payers audiences once GA4 has collected enough historical data. Or you can use your own custom criteria to create whatever audience you like and then create audience triggers off of that custom audience. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about predictive audiences. Google Analytics has predictive metrics that apply Google's machine learning to unlock the predictive power in your historical business data. In particular, there's three predictive metrics that you can use. Purchase probability is the probability that a user who was active in the last 28 days will log a specific conversion event within the next seven days. Churn probability helps you anticipate which users are likely to churn when they disengage with your website or app. And then lastly, the revenue prediction metric helps you assess the revenue expected from all purchase conversions within the next 28 days from active users. You can use predictive metrics in a couple different ways. For example, you can build an audience with these predictive conditions in it and then use that for targeting in an ads campaign. Or you could, on top of that, use an audience trigger to fire conversion events when new users join that predictive audience. Now let's talk about audience export. You can export Google Analytics audiences to Google Ads, DV360, and SA360. In order to do so, you need to make sure that you do the following. The Google Analytics 4 property that you're using must be linked to a Google Ads account or an SA or DV360 advertiser. Second, the Enable Personalized Advertise setting must be set to Enables during the linking process. And finally, Google Signals must be enabled on the GA4 property. This is required for remarketing. Now I'm going to do a demo to show how the Audience Builder works in Google Analytics 4. So here we are in the Google Merchandise Store demo account in the Admin section. We're going to go to the Audience section. And from here, we'll click on New Audience. As I discussed previously, here is where you can use a template to create an audience. For example, here in the Technology section, I might want to pick a device category. For this example, I'll pick Mobile. And then maybe you want to also filter by the brand. So in this case, I'll pick Apple. And here, now you can see a summary of how many users would be included in this audience if you were to save it. Next, let's go ahead and look at the verticalized suggested audiences like we discussed previously. So here, if we look at the cart abandoner suggested audience, this is users that added items to their cart without purchasing. So here we can see the add to cart item in the include clause, but then we can also see that we're excluding users who have completed e-commerce purchases. And then lastly, if you want to create an audience from scratch, you click up here on Create a Custom Audience. Up here at the top is where we can give our audience a name. And then additionally, we can add a description here if we like. And then here in our Include clause, here is where we can set a dimension, metric, or event to start to define our audience. I've selected the Purchase event to include only users who have completed a purchase event. Next, we can go ahead and select the condition scoping. I'm going to leave mine set as across all the sessions, but you can see the other options available here. And next, you can set a specific membership duration. I'll go ahead and change mine to 60 days. 
Additionally, if you want to, you can go ahead and create an audience trigger. This would fire or create an event every time a user completed a purchase and joined this audience. So for the event name, I might call this triggered purchase event. And then I can go ahead and save that. Next, if we like, we can add an exclusion condition group. For example, maybe I want to exclude users from California. So I can go ahead and set region and then add a filter to contains California, which will now exclude users who have completed a purchase from California. Down here, I can see in the summary card what the expected audience size would be. And this is an estimate based on the last 30 days. And if everything looks good to me from here, I can go ahead and save that audience. And now that audience will be included here in my audience table. Now, in order to be able to export your Google Analytics audience to an ads destination, for example, you are going to want to make sure that your account is linked. So in the product link section, for example, if you come to the Google ad link section, if you click the link button here, if you follow the quick three-step process, this is how you can link an account to start exporting your Google Analytics audiences over to Google Ads, for example. So now we've seen how we can create an audience in Google Analytics 4 and how to share that audience with a Google Ads account. Now I'm going to hop back over to the slides so we can get to the key takeaways. To summarize, Audiences are groups of your users who share the same attributes and can be segmented by dimensions, metrics, and events that are important to your business. You can create new audiences using either a template, a suggested audience, or you can start from scratch. We also talked about audience triggers, which is a useful feature that allows you to create an event when an audience criteria is met. And then lastly, we showed how you can export Google Analytics audiences to a Google Ads account, for example, to be used for marketing purposes. Thank you so much for joining me for today's session. Just as a reminder, this is part of a larger training series with more videos to come in the future, so stay tuned. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to go to the Google Analytics Help Center online, or if you're a 360 customer, feel free to reach out to your account representative. Thank you.